long time no see. It has been a while since I made a video. Um, I think it's been like at least two weeks, which is not like me at all, but it has been a very strange and pretty crappy two weeks to be honest. I've just not felt like filming. I won't go into it too much, um, but if any of you follow me on Instagram you will know um, what has been happening this past couple of weeks and I've just not felt like filming at all. Um, so yeah, I'm fine, the baby's fine, but it hasn't been a great couple of weeks. Um, yeah. So today I am actually 11 weeks and one day pregnant, um, which is further than I've ever got before, which is amazing. Um, and I'm going to do my 9 slash 10 week update, as I don't think I've updated you guys since 8 weeks. So yeah, here it goes. I'm just going to try and get straight into it because there's a lot to update you on. And I'm feeling really rusty about filming and don't really know how to do this anymore. Um, so yes, I am 11 weeks and one day pregnant today and the past two weeks have been pretty okay in terms of the pregnancy. One thing I will say is that I have had on and off more bleeding. Um, it has been mainly brown, so I've had brown spotting on and off. I'd say I probably get it once or twice a week for maybe a day and it is quite light, but I mean, ble bleeding scary in any pregnancy, but when you've been through miscarriage, you see it and you automatically think the worst. And even though I've had it now so many times and you'd think that maybe I would kind of be a bit more used to it, um, it still scares me every single time I see it. Um, so far, things are seeming okay. On Sunday, just gone, so I will have been 10 weeks and three days pregnant. Um, it was Mother's Day here in the UK and we had booked a private scan so we took my mum for a scan and that was amazing. Um, it was expensive. I actually daren't say out loud how much this scan cost but it was £89 <laughs> for a scan. Um, which I think you can get private scans a lot cheaper but the combination of it being an early scan and also on a Sunday on Mother's Day meant that the prices were expensive um, but it was amazing. We got some really really good pictures. Um, so we got this one and you can see the baby here, this is its big head, this is its little foot and then this looks like a club foot and it was like whoa that baby's got a big foot but that is actually the umbilical cord um, which is very exciting. Got another one there, a little bit more zoomed in. Um, so the scan was really interesting, the private scan. I have had, um, as you guys know, plenty of other scans. I've actually had five scans on the NHS so far and never before have they been able to tell me why I've been having this bleeding. But the guy at the private scan, he straight away saw I'm going to look on here and see what you say. He gave us this little printout which says kind of information about the baby. There is a small ECH, which I can't remember the full word, but it's like a hematoma and it's basically like um, how he explained it, like a pocket of blood and fluid um, that isn't generally dangerous to the baby. Normally it will just dissolve and shrink on its own, but because he'd seen that he said I wouldn't be surprised if you had more bleeding. So that's quite comforting um, that he found that. And he also said that I have a tilted uterus, which again nobody has ever mentioned before and you think they would pick up on. Um, they do always seem to struggle to find the baby when they do a um, abdominal, I can't say it, an abdominal ultrasound as opposed to a transvaginal ultrasound and um, they seem to always struggle to find the baby and straight away he was like oh well, you've got a tilted uterus so it will be harder to find the baby um, and no one's ever mentioned that to me before and it makes so much sense it's not dangerous in any way to the baby but it just makes a lot of sense because I get quite a lot of back pain and I've been having a lot of cramps as you guys know and that can all be kind of part and parcel of kind of being pregnant with a tilted uterus um, so that makes a lot of sense to me now. As the pregnancy progresses, as far as I understand, the uterus kind of is pushed forwards as it's kind of pushed more up. 
um, and it kind of straightens itself out. So it isn't a problem, but it explains some of the symptoms that I have had that no one has really been able to explain before. So it was a really, really interesting scan. Um, really interesting. Also found it mega comforting because the scan I'd had, so I had a scan at, when will it have been? I will have been nine weeks, four days, I think it was, I had a scan and I was measuring six days behind. So I was measuring eight weeks, five days at nine weeks, four. And I was freaking out a little bit about that. But when I went for this scan on Mother's Day, I should have been 10-3 and I was measuring 10-4. So in that space of about a week, the baby had like grown two weeks in size, which I know when they're small, they can be quite hard to get accurate measurements anyway, because it's kind of within a millimeter. Um, but it was really, really comforting. I was worrying about the baby maybe not growing as it should have been, but it seemed to have caught up fine on Sunday's scan, so that was amazing. Um, we now have a little nickname for baby actually, which um, I find pretty funny. Andrew has named the baby Paul, <laughs> because the guy that did our scan private was called Paul and his name's printed on the scan. So Andrew's like, oh, look at little baby Paul. Um, so we just call the baby, baby Paul now, which isn't a name I would choose. No disrespect if your name is Paul, but I'm, I'm getting quite endeared to the name now. And I'm like, oh, little baby Paul, so cute. Um, so yeah, little baby Paul seems to be doing well so far. Talking of calling the baby little baby Paul, um, we are actually quite convinced that we are having a boy um, for the first couple of scans. So I had a scan at, first scan I think I was about five weeks, four days maybe. Um, and for that scan and the one the week after, it's six weeks, four days, I was convinced that we were having a girl. I got really strong girl vibes and I was convinced it was a girl. But since then, I just feel like this baby is a boy and I'm not fussed on gender at all. So that's absolutely fine with me, but I just have a really strong feeling that this baby is a boy. And if they told me, hopefully if we get to that stage, if they told me it was a girl, I would be gobsmacked because I'm just so sure it's a boy. I've also noticed this really not pleasant symptom this week, which I'm not enjoying, but you know, I take whatever they throw at me, it's fine. <laughs> but I've got a really hairy belly. That sounds so gross, but I was in the bath the other day and I looked down and I was like, oh my God, my belly is hairy. I look like a Yeti, like it's not cute. And I was like, do I shave it? Do I shave my belly? Um, so yeah, pretty embarrassed to be admitting on camera that I have a hairy belly, but you know, if it's helping little baby Paul, then do what you gotta do. That's totally fine. Um, other symptoms I've noticed this past couple of weeks are my boobs have been sore still, but very on and off. Some days are absolutely fine. In some days they can be really quite painful. Um, I have had quite a lot of headaches, um, and I was also struck down you might say with a really horrible cold um during week nine was it week nine or week ten somewhere between them somewhere over the past couple of weeks i had a really nasty cold um which ordinarily i wouldn't moan about cold a cold is fine but when you are pregnant obviously you can't take lem sips you can't take all the things you would normally take um i had an awful cough and apart from like a bit of lemon and honey, there wasn't really anything I could take to soothe it. And I was so scared because my cough was so violent that I was really scared I was gonna like dislodge the baby or I don't know, it just really scared me coughing and sneezing and it felt so aggressive. And I know people are violently, violently sick throughout their entire pregnancy. So realistically coughing or sneezing isn't gonna harm the baby, but I'm so paranoid about every little thing that I was convinced there's no way this baby can have survived this horrific coughing attack. Um, but so far everything seems to be good. I'm sure a lot of you who watch my TTC pregnancy videos also watch Kelsey from It's Kelsey's Life and a lot of you will already know that sadly Kelsey lost her baby. Um, I find miscarriage really hard to deal with for anyone and I'm just devastated for her, I really am. Um, we speak a fair bit and 
I just think she's doing amazingly how she's handling it but um, you know understandably it's going to be a really long journey for her and it's just unfair and cruel and yeah so I'm sure you all have but I'll be thinking of Kelsey and sending her good vibes and I just quickly want to mention on that note um, mine and Kelsey's TTC giveaway um, I have picked my winner and I have contacted my winner but I think understandably you will all completely get this um, we decided it, it wasn't fair for Kelsey to have to do that to have to pick a winner to have to send pregnancy tests and things off with everything she's going through um so Kelsey will not be picking a winner for the giveaway anymore um so that will just be on my side I have emailed the winner and she sent me her address so I will be sending the prize off this week um but yeah please all go and send Kelsey your best wishes and prayers and anything like that that you believe in or you know whatever your beliefs are um, please just send her all your best thoughts because she's going through the worst time at the moment um, and I just really really feel for her um, I really really feel really devastated for her um, life is just very very cruel and it's I struggle to keep faith in the universe and the world when things like this happen to people that have already been through to anyone but when people have already been through so much um the things that have happened this past couple of weeks have really made me question things a lot um so i think that's probably it for now big news for the week ahead is that on next thursday at 12 weeks exactly i have my 12 week dating scan which feels like such a milestone um obviously i've never got even close to having that scan before and it feels so close now that i'm so scared something's gonna go wrong but it's also giving me that little glimmer of hope that so far everything's been okay but then you get really scared when you've been in this position before that like because you get that little glimmer of hope it's gonna be taken away from you um and I really hope baby Paul clings that in there and he's doing so well and when we saw him um, we've actually been for a scan this morning at 11 weeks one day with the recurrent miscarriage unit just because of the bleeding and things I've been having they've been wanting to keep a really close eye on it and he was doing <laughs> he I don't know but he was doing really well um, bouncing all around um, we heard the heartbeat for the first time which was absolutely amazing and yeah so far so good so just massive fingers crossed that little baby Paul is doing just as well at the 12 week scan on Thursday and we get to hit that really big milestone um I've not decided what we're going to do in terms of announcing it obviously I'm very open on here about the pregnancy because you guys have followed my journey from day one and I think it's really important to document the whole experience of being pregnant after infertility and being pregnant after going through miscarriage but I've not decided what I'm going to do in terms of if I'm going to announce it on Instagram or if I'm going to announce it on Facebook I'm very scared of jinxing things and even though realistically I know I don't think you can really jinx things like with previous pregnancies I've tried the being really open and telling people and I miscarried and I've tried the not telling anyone and being really secretive about it and I still miscarried so I don't think you really can jinx things but I don't know let me let me know what you guys think like should I announce it should I just keep it to myself I'm also very conscious that having been someone that was so desperate to be pregnant for so long um when I was on Facebook or when I was on Instagram if I'd be scrolling through and see a pregnancy announcement it really hurts um no matter no matter how happy for that person you are it is a massive reminder of what you don't have and it is really difficult to see someone have that moment that you dream of and I would hate for someone I mean, the amount of times I would see them and burst into tears 
and the the thought of someone seeing my announcement and bursting into tears and feeling that devastation that I felt every time I saw that pregnancy announcement I would never want to make anyone feel like that but at the same time it's that moment you dream of and do I want to not have that experience I don't know let me know what you guys think would you announce it would you not announce it I don't know um another thing I feel like I'm throwing the updates at you today last week was actually my final HCG booster which I didn't realize I thought I had at least one more and they told me today I don't the last one they give you is when you are approaching 11 weeks and I'm obviously 11 weeks now so no more HCG boosters for me which they were really excited about and that that did provide some comfort for me um that they were so like yay you don't have to have them anymore like you've done it um and they were really enthusiastic and they when I said I was worried about it they were like no people are normally so excited and like I am excited that I don't have to have them anymore because who wants injections no one does but they gave me some real comfort like who knows whether without these injections I would have got this far in my pregnancy they could have done nothing I could have just been very unlucky previous times and had three pregnancies that just weren't strong enough to make it and then this one could have been always fine but those injections for me every week have been a massive comfort and I really feel deep down like they are the reason I'm still pregnant so to not have them anymore is scary I know around this time the placenta starts to take over and the hormones drop anyway and like so I understand why they don't give them anymore but then about a whole host of new fears like what if my placenta doesn't work what if it hasn't attached properly it's just a whole host of fears those of you who've had 12 week scans please tell me do they check the placenta is working like can they check that do they check that I don't know um I'd love to know and final question for you all before I leave you after this big long ramble is hair dye where do you guys stand on hair dye my roots are horrendous like I've got really mousy brown hair naturally so my roots I don't know if you can see they look grey they look awful um obviously there's mixed opinions some people say it's absolutely fine some people say it's absolutely fine once you hit the second trimester some people say don't do it at all it's dangerous obviously if it's dangerous I would not risk that in the slightest but if that's just an old wives tale I'm feeling really frumpy and horrible not having my roots done and I know that sounds vain but having my roots done just makes it feel like I feel like it lifts my complexion I feel like I've put on weight and got really fat <laughs> since I've been pregnant which is my own fault because I'm not eating as I should be but I just feel like doing my roots would make me feel a lot better um but obviously if there's risk there I would never do that I would never risk it just to get my roots done um so I'd love to know what you guys think if there's any hairdressers watching definitely please let me know where you stand on dyeing your roots when you are pregnant um specifically in the first trimester or whether you think it's okay in the second trimester anything i am completely rambling now i think i'm gonna leave it that i will show you the bump under this mammoth jumper i've actually gone to the effort of buying like a strappy vest top so i can show you not that there's much to see other than a bit of like eating too many crisps <laughs> fat rolls but yeah um I will leave it at that for now guys um yeah i hope you're all having a really good week i hope you have a great weekend and i will see you all in my next video which i promise will not be two weeks away this time so yes i don't know how well you can see that guys but this is the belly at 11 weeks um not loads to see don't think i've got like a massive bump or anything um, I'm just feeling a bit chubby from too many crisps to be honest, but yes, there we have it, 11 weeks.